Greetings, and welcome to the Collegium Pharmaceutical Second Quarter 2024 Earnings Conference Call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. A question and answer session will follow the formal presentation. If anyone should require operator assistance during the conference, please press star zero on your telephone keypad. Please note that this conference call is being recorded. I'll now turn the call over to Christopher James, Vice President of Invest Relations at Collegium. Thank you. You may begin. Welcome to Collegium Pharmaceuticals' second quarter 2024 earnings conference call. I'm joined today by Mike Heffernan, our Interim President and Chief Executive Officer, Founder and Chairman, Colleen Tupper, our Chief Financial Officer, and Scott Dreyer, our Chief Commercial Officer. Before we begin today's call, we want to remind participants that none of the information presented today is intended to be promotional, and that any forward-looking statements made today are made pursuant to the safe harbor provision of the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. You are cautioned that such forward-looking statements involve risks and uncertainties, including and without limitation, the risk that we may not be able to successfully commercialize our products, that we may incur significant expense in doing so, that we may not prevail in current or future litigation pertaining to our business. Risks related to our ability to complete the acquisition of Iron Shore Therapeutics on the proposed terms and schedule or at all. Risks related to our ability to realize the anticipated benefits and synergies of the proposed acquisition of Iron Shore. The risk that the business will not be integrated successfully. Risks related to negative effects of this announcement or the consummation of proposed acquisition on the market price of our common stock and or operating results and risks related to future opportunities and plans for Ironshore. These risks and other risks of the company are detailed in the company's periodic reports filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Our future results may differ materially from our current expectations discussed today. Our earnings press release and this call will include discussion of certain non-GAAP information. You can find our earnings press release, including relevant non-GAAP reconciliations, on our corporate website at collegiumpharma.com. I will now turn the call over to our chairman, Interim President and CEO, Mike Heffernan. Thank you, Chris. Good afternoon, and thank you, everyone, for joining the call. Today, we will discuss Collegium's financial performance during the second quarter and provide an update on our progress in 2024. At Collegium, we are focused on building a leading, diversified specialty pharmaceutical company committed to improving the lives of people living with serious medical conditions while striving to do good as we do well. I'd like to recognize the Collegium team for their dedication to our mission and community impact, as well as their strong performance in support of our pain portfolio in implementing our capital deployment strategy in the first half of the year. Our results this quarter and through the first half of the year reinforce Collegium's strong operational execution. We continue to generate robust operating cash flows and drive significant top and bottom line growth in our pain portfolio, including growing revenue 7%, and adjusted even at 12% on a year-over-year -year basis in the second quarter. Through execution of the HICMA authorized generic agreement and securing the six-month pediatric exclusivity extension for the new center franchise, we are maximizing the value of this portfolio through 2025 and beyond. The strength of our pain business positions us to execute on the recently announced proposed acquisition of Iron Shore Therapeutics, including its commercial product, Jordan APM, a central nervous system stimulant for the treatment of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD, in people six years of age and older. The Ironshore acquisition meets all of our business development objectives. Jornet APM is a highly differentiated commercial asset, asset that diversifies our portfolio, has significant revenue and growth potential, and exclusivity into the 2030s. Jornet APM is expected to generate net revenue in excess of $100 million in 2024, expands our commercial presence into ADHD, a large and growing market, and is poised to become the leading growth driver for Collegium. Once the acquisition closes, we will leverage our core competencies with respect to commercial execution and build on our proven track record of efficiently and successfully integrating commercial assets to build our portfolio. Importantly, the addition of Jordan APM serves as a step forward in building another therapeutic area of focus for Collegium. We look forward to closing this transaction in the third quarter, welcoming the Ironshore team to Collegium, and embracing Jordan APM as the newest part of our portfolio. For the second half of this year, we are focused on delivering 
our financial commitments by maximizing our pain business while closing and seamlessly integrating our proposed acquisition of Ironshore Therapeutics. We are confident that we will achieve our 2024 financial commitments for the pain business, which along with the joint APM will set a solid foundation, foundation for 2025 and beyond. Additionally, our search for the next CEO to lead Collegium in this upcoming phase of growth is active and ongoing. And we look forward to sharing updates on this important process as they become available. Our strong executive team has the full trust of the board and will continue our focus on operational execution during this process. I'll now hand the call over to Colleen to discuss key business highlights and financials. Thanks, Mike. Good afternoon, everyone. In the second quarter of 2024, we generated top and bottom line growth, executed on our capital deployment strategy, and improved the outlook for our pain portfolio in 2025 and beyond. Recent key accomplishments and highlights include we delivered another strong quarter for Belbuca with prescriptions up 2.1% year over year and 1.4% quarter over quarter, coupled with record quarterly Belbuca revenue up 21% year over year. We grew Extampsa ER revenue 8% year over year with gross to net of 56.2% in the second quarter, reinforcing the success of our contract renegotiation strategy. We bolstered the value of the new Cinta franchise in 2025 and beyond through our authorized generic agreement with Hikma Pharmaceuticals and the six-month pediatric exclusivity extension for the new Cinta franchise. Extending the exclusivity of new Cinta to January 3, 2027 and new Cinta ER to December 27, 2025. And we executed on our capital deployment strategy, including announcing the proposed acquisition of Ironshore Therapeutics, which will establish Collegium's presence in the large and growing ADHD market, and diversify our portfolio with a meaningfully differentiated product that is poised to become our leading growth driver. Securing attractive financing for the acquisition of Ironshore with terms that reduce our cost of capital by 300 basis points and enhance flexibility in the management of our debt. Redeeming all $26.4 million aggregate principal amount of our previously outstanding convertible senior notes due in 2026 and returning $35 million in capital to shareholders through an accelerated share repurchase program repurchasing 1.06 million shares at an average share price of $32.94. Our second quarter performance reflects record Belbuca revenue, disciplined expense management, significant bottom line expansion, and robust operating cash flows. Financial highlights for the second quarter include net product revenues were $145.3 million in the second quarter, up 7% year over year. Belbuca net revenue was a record $52.2 million, up 21% year-over-year. Extampsa ER net revenue was $44.6 million, up 8% year-over-year, and Extampsa ER gross to net was 56.2% in the second quarter. We now expect the full-year Extampsa ER gross to net to be between 55 to 57% in 2024, which is an improvement from our previously guided range of 56 to 58 percent. Looking forward to 2025 with the Medicare Part D redesign, Extampsa ER will benefit from the small manufacturer phase-in period related to paying rebates for utilization by low-income subsidy patients, also known as dual eligibles. Nucentia franchise net revenue is $44.5 million, down 6 percent year-over-year. Gap operating expenses were $43.3 million, up 13% year-over-year. This quarter included a $3.1 million charge related to the CEO transition. Excluding this in stock-based compensation, adjusted operating expenses were $30.3 million, down 3% year-over-year. Gap net income for the second quarter was $19.6 million, up 51% year-over-year. Non-GAAP adjusted EBITDA was $96 million, up 12% year-over-year. GAAP earnings per share was $0.60 cents basic and $0.52 cents diluted on the second, in the second quarter compared to GAAP earnings per share of $0.38 cents basic and $0.34 cents diluted in the prior year period. 
Non-GAAP adjusted earnings per share was $1.62 in the second quarter, up 29% year over year. Please see our press release issued earlier today for a reconciliation of GAAP to non-GAAP results. As of June 30th, we had $271.6 million in cash, cash equivalents, and marketable securities. We generated another quarter of strong cash flows, enabling us to execute on our capital deployment strategy and enter into an agreement to acquire Ironshore. Under the terms of the proposed Ironshore acquisition, Collegium will acquire all the outstanding shares of Ironshore for $525 million in cash at closing. Collegium will also pay Ironshore shareholders $25 million in additional consideration if Journey PM net revenue exceeds a defined threshold in 2025. The all-cash consideration will be funded by approximately $200 million of Collegium's existing cash on hand and approximately $325 million of our new $646 million secured financing from Pharmacon. $320.8 $320.8 million of the new term loan was used to replace our prior term loan with Pharmacon, reducing our interest rate on this balance by 300 basis points. Our reduced interest rate enables us to keep our interest expense for the next 12 months relatively stable, including the funding of an acquisition that is poised to add a new lead growth driver, Jorn APM. In addition to the significant improvement in our cost of capital, the new term loan also has a longer term, lower amortization, and more prepayment flexibility. We expect the transaction to be immediately accretive to adjusted EBITDA while being highly accretive to 2025 adjusted EBITDA. The acquisition is expected to close in the third quarter of 2024, subject to customary closing conditions, including receipt of required regulatory approvals. We are reaffirming our 2024 financial guidance for the current business, not including the impact of the proposed acquisition of Ironshore. We expect net product revenues in the range of $580 to $595 million. We expect Bellbuca revenue growth in 2024 to be fueled by full-year prescription growth. We expect 2024 revenue growth for Extam CER to be driven by gross-to-net improvement. For the Nucinta franchise on a full-year basis, due to the elimination of the Medicaid cap by the American Recovery Act, we expect some pressure on the Nucinta franchise year-over-year revenues in 2024, with a return to relative year-over-year stability in 2025. We expect adjusted operating expenses in the range of 120 to 125 million, with expenses being lower in the second half of the year as compared to the first half of the year and adjusted EBITDA in the range of $380 to $395 million. We plan to provide updated 2024 financial guidance for the combined business, including Ironshore, after the acquisition closes. 2024 Journey PM net revenue is expected to be in excess of $100 million. With our strong financial performance in the first half of the year, we are well positioned to deliver on our financial commitments for 2024. As we look beyond this year, our outlook for our pain portfolio in 2025 and beyond continues to meaningfully improve, due in part to milestones we achieved this year, including the authorized generic agreement with Hikma Pharmaceuticals and the six-month pediatric exclusivity extension for the Nucinta franchise. And lastly, the Medicare Part D redesign in 2025 will serve as a tailwind for our pain portfolio, in particular for Extamsa ER. We anticipate the continued strength of our pain portfolio to support our expansion into neurology and for total company growth to be bolstered by Journey PM. Our capital deployment strategy is focused on creating long-term value for our shareholders by executing on business development, paying down debt, and opportunistically returning capital to shareholders. Our acquisition of Ironshore meets each and every one of our business development criteria, and we will be focused on closing the transaction, integrating Ironshore, and maximizing Journey PM. With the transaction, we secured a new term loan that replaces our existing loan at significantly improved terms. We estimate that our net leverage at year-end will be less than two times based on estimated fiscal year 2024 pro forma combined EBITDA. We expect that our significant cash flow generation post-transaction will enable us to delever and maintain a strong balance sheet to fund our growth going forward. We also strategically managed our balance and 
balance sheet and reduce debt by redeeming the $26.4 million total principal amount of our 2026 convertible senior notes in all cash. We remain dedicated to creating value for our shareholders through opportunistically leveraging our $150 million share repurchase program as part of our capital deployment strategy. We recently repurchased $35 million through an accelerated share repurchase program at an average price of $32.94 per share. We have $150 million remaining in the program. I will now turn it over to Scott to give a commercial update. Thanks, Colleen. At Collegium, we take pride in being the leader in responsible pain management with a unique and differentiated portfolio of products for the treatment of pain. Belbuca, Extampsa ER, and Nucinta ER collectively command over half of the branded ER market, demonstrating the ongoing strength and reach of our portfolio. Our commercial organization is focused on continuing to drive momentum for our products in order to make a positive impact on the lives of people living with pain and the communities we serve. Belbuca continued to grow in the second quarter. Prescriptions grew 2.1% compared to the second quarter of 2023, marking the fourth straight quarter of year-over-year prescription growth. We're encouraged by this consistent prescription growth, including 1.4% growth in the second quarter compared to the first quarter, and the impact that our strong commercial execution is having in the marketplace. We believe Schedule 3 products should be used before Schedule 2 and used more broadly. Belbuca is uniquely positioned because of its clinical differentiation as a Schedule 3 product with a broad range of doses for the management of severe and persistent pain that requires an extended treatment period. Our commercial teams focused on delivering this message to healthcare professionals and building upon our commercial execution. Our priorities for Belbuca include pulling through Belbuca's strong commercial access, improving push-through in Medicare Part D, and expanding Medicare Part D coverage. Belbuca revenue growth in 2024 is expected to be driven by prescription growth. Extampsa ER prescriptions were stable in the second quarter and in line with our expectations. We expect revenue growth for the full year to be driven by improved gross to net. We're committed to educating physicians on Extampsa's differentiated label, pulling through our strong access position in commercial and Part D plans, and securing new payer wins with available gross to net headroom. Our aspiration is to replace OxyContin utilization for appropriate patients. The Nucinta franchise is a key contributor to our pain portfolio. Tepentadol is a differentiated molecule with a proposed dual mechanism of action. It's viewed favorably and is highly differentiated by healthcare professionals. The positive developments for the franchise, including the authorized generic agreement with HICMA and the six-month pediatric extension, along with our market access strategy, enable us to manage the Nucinta franchise contribution in a relatively stable manner year-on-year, beginning in 2025 and beyond. We're excited to be a diamond sponsor and significant participant at Pain Week this September. It's the largest pain conference in the U.S. for healthcare providers. We'll have a significant commercial and medical presence and expect to present eight posters supporting our pain franchise. This is a meaningful opportunity for Collegium to educate and engage with pain specialists across the country and expand the reach of our portfolio. Our participation further echoes our commitment to leading with the science. We're thrilled to welcome Jorn APM into our portfolio of commercial assets and to expand our commercial presence into the large and growing ADHD market upon closing of the Ironshore acquisition. Jorn APM is a highly differentiated product that can address an unmet need for patients and caregivers. And it's poised for rapid growth as we look to leverage our commercial experience to maximize the brand's potential. The ADHD market has grown 5% on average over the past four years. And over the past few years, Jordan APM has delivered significant double-digit prescription growth. In 2023, total prescriptions for Jordan A grew 58% compared to 2022 to approximately 490,000. And through the first half of this year, Jorn APM prescriptions have grown 32% year over year. In addition, Jorn A has a broad and growing prescriber base, approximately 15,000 prescribers every month, and strong market access. The ADHD business is concentrated to the commercial and the Medicaid segments, about 60% of the business in commercial and 40% in Medicaid. And Jorn APM has 80% coverage across these segments. With these strong fundamentals and clinical differentiation, we see significant opportunity for Jorn APM. 
and we believe it has the potential to be Collegium's leading growth driver, complementing our continued leadership position in responsible pain management. In closing, in the second half of the year, we're focused on operational execution to drive momentum in our pain portfolio and integrate Jorn APM seamlessly into our portfolio. We believe that we are well positioned for meaningful growth in 2025 and beyond. I'll now turn the call back to Mike. Thanks, Scott. We are at a transformational time for Collegian. We are on track to deliver record financial performance this year as we maximize the value of our pain portfolio and deliver on the growth with Belbuca and Extend VER. With the addition of Jorn APM upon closing of the Iron Shore acquisition, we are expanding into a new therapeutic area with a differentiated product that is poised to become our leading growth driver. We are confident in our ability to achieve our strategic and financial commitments in order to create value for shareholders. With a solid track record of execution and success, Legium is well positioned for future growth. I will now open the call up for questions. Operator? Thank you. We will now be conducting a question and answer section. If you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. A confirmation tone will indicate your line is in the question queue. You may press star 2 if you would like to remove your question from the queue. For participants using speaker equipment, it may be necessary to pick up your handset before pressing the star key. Our first question comes from the line of David Amsalem with Piper Sandler. Please proceed with your question. Um, thanks. So just have um, a couple. Uh, first, on Belbuca, um, and I joined late, so I apologize if I missed this in the prepared remarks, but can you talk about how you're thinking about um, improving uh, Medicare Part D access for that product beyond this year? Um, and just remind us what um, uh, covered lives on Part D currently looks like. So that's number one. Um, and then secondly, in terms of the acquisition and the um, the focus um, on ADHD and calling on psychiatrists, how do you think about um, additional transactions over the long term uh, as you delever, as you're generating cash, uh, now that you're in this um, new therapeutic vertical? Um, would it be safe to say that you're going to look for additional assets that leverage the infrastructure that you're going to have in place? Thanks. So, Scott, you want to take that first question? Thanks, David, for the questions. Yeah, that's great. I'll take that. Thanks, David. So, yeah, so first and foremost, if you look at the current position of Belbuca, it's covered for about 30% of Medicare Part D lives. As we, and as we look going forward in terms of uh, in improving that, that coverage, look, the focus is the clinical profile of the drug. We believe that Schedule 3 should be used before Schedule 2 and used more broadly, and that patients should have full access to the differentiated profile of Belbuca. So that's what we're engaging payers with is that clinical data, that data that only keeps getting stronger, and then we'll see uh, where the dust settles when we get to November if we're able to achieve new wins in an economics that works for us. Great. Thanks, Scott. And on the second question, David, about acquisition strategy going forward, I mean, clearly, you know, we're going to be focused in the short term on integration and then growing the Journey uh, business, which will, will, will take, you know, a significant amount of effort. Subsequent to that, we'll be calling on, you know, a mix of pediatrics and neuropsych. So we will be sharpening our BD focus around those particular focus areas, which gives us a lot of optionality. And um, as you suggest, we will be looking to create synergy in, as we build the business development strategy going forward. Okay, that's helpful. Thanks. Thank you. And as a reminder, if anyone has any questions, you may press star 1 on your telephone keypad to join the queue. Our next question comes from the line of uh, Les Zulisky uh, with Schwartz Security. Please proceed with your question. Great. Thank you for taking my questions, and uh, <clears throat> congrats on the quarter. Uh, how do you balance the integration uh, versus maintaining the performance you've been able to achieve across your uh, current portfolio? And then uh, second, on the uh, update on the CEO search, has the Ironshore acquisition changed the focus on the uh, potential candidate selection? Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Les, for the questions. Um, 
you know, from the standpoint, I'll, I'll take the CEO search um, question. So, you know, the CEO search, as I mentioned in my comments, is, is ongoing and active and making good progress, and we've seen some really good candidates. Frankly, if anything, this has increased the interest uh, because of the growth potential uh, when we bring Journey into the uh, portfolio. So uh, we remain very focused on finding a you know, top-tier candidate, and this has not changed the strategy at all. Scott, do you want to take the uh, first question? Yeah, sure, Mike. Yeah, thanks for the question, Les. And, and in terms of balance, it's very simple. We will maintain 100% of our pain sales force, marketing teams, the core commercial people focused on pain, and then we will integrate a fully commercialized journey team in that sales force, and there will be no overlap. Each will be focused on what they're responsible for, the pain group, with continuing to maximize the value of that full portfolio of pain products, and the Join APA PM team continuing to focus on the, the growth trajectory that's been started for Join A. So that's our approach, is really just keeping complete separation uh, in our commercial efforts. Great, thank you. Thank you. Again, as a reminder, if anyone has any questions, Pressing star one will join you into the questionnaire issue queue to ask a question. And it looks like we have reached the end of the question and answer session. And I'll turn the call back over to Mike for closing remarks. Thank you everyone for joining the call today. Have a great evening. And this concludes today's conference and you may disconnect your lines at this time. Thank you for your participation.